Hello and welcome to another episode in which I'm going to be showing you the third part on how to set up your virtual machine and get your USB drives working, which we did in the first second part, sorry about that. In this part I'm going to show you kind of uh, how to get Odin running. Now as you're going to see, I have everything kind of set up. Uh, I am doing a voiceover on this video, so excuse me if things don't line up quite as nicely. I needed to use all my USB ports, and unfortunately I have a USB mic. So what I'm showing you here is just kind of how my virtual manager is set up. So to make sure that, you know, if you are doing it yourself with Windows XP, you can kind of see what I'm working with. Uh, on the bottom there, I'm showing you that's how to activate a USB, which I'm going, going ahead and uh, I'm gonna show you how to do all that as well. So what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna figure out a few different uh, I guess you would say a few different ways of setting this up. So you're going to have two options to work with your USB. You're either going to work within, uh, or you're either going to manually set it up, or you're going to actually uh, have it automatically set up. Uh, for your Android device, if you're plugging it in and you're looking to root it using Odin, which I'll show you in this video, I'm going to definitely recommend that you have it automatically connect because download mode for Android devices a little sensitive so sometimes when you're trying to connect it to your computer and then forward it to your virtual machine it gets a little glitchy so what I'm showing you here is I plugged in a external hard drive and when I come down here to this little USB you can see that it is actually uh, recognized so that's how you would actually select it manually or you can go up to the top and go to devices and do it that way as well so when I plug that in I don't have that set up to automatically connect so when you so when you don't have it automatically set up you have to manually go down there and click that and let it connect and then it'll take it from your Ubuntu and forward it through so when you go into your settings as you can see here you can manually set it up to where it'll automatically connect and that's why you see the top one is a Samsung device that is because when I plug in my phone and I already have my virtual machine up and running that it will automatically connect to it right away and it makes things very easy when I go into download mode and I have Odin up and running so do take that into a consideration and I do highly recommend that. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to actually go ahead and I'm going to speed up this video just a little bit. And as we're speeding up this video is just because I want to keep make sure that uh, what I'm talking about kind of stays on par. Um, you're going to notice the big kind of difference with it all uh, understanding is uh, you need to open up Odin. So you can see all these files that I have on my desktop within my Windows XP. Uh, I actually got those by downloading them from my Ubuntu version, getting them all set up that way because the Ubuntu side of things or the Linux side of things works a lot faster than it does anywhere else. So I actually transferred them all via the way you just saw me connect it, an external hard drive, and then I just dragged and dropped them to my desktop. So as you can see, I have Odin right here. Uh, Odin does take a split second. Sometimes it can take a second for things to load. Uh, so maybe if you start up your Windows or your Windows or whatever virtual machine you're starting up, give it a few seconds. So there's my uh, hard drive, and I'm just kind of showing you I actually have a corrupt drive, unfortunately, so I have to go back and reinstall it, uh, re-clean it up. But that's just showing you that I can access the hard drive itself directly from within. And you're going to notice on the very top left-hand corner that it's not there anymore. So what needs to uh, what we need to do next is we're going to go ahead and show the Odin. So I'm actually, Odin should be booting in the background right now might not be I might have to go back and retard it but as I'm pointing out these are just the the main files that you're gonna need so I do want to put a warning a uh, word of warning out there if you are trying this make sure you do have the correct files I am not responsible for anything you do to your device if you brick it or ruin it or any of that that is totally on you and I'm sorry for that if that does happen but I will say this chances are it's not going to happen as long as you get your right files uh, you want to probably head over to XDA developers and go find your section for your exact model as well as making sure you get the one that is running on your service such as AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, Verizon, so on and get your files from there. Ask questions in those forums. The people over XDA are amazing. Uh, it's a great community for rooting people. Uh, so if you're a rooter or in, into any of that type of stuff, go ahead and head over there. Now getting back to this video, uh, what you're going to know is that is I'm going to have to open up Odin and since I have everything connected uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually let me backtrack a little bit here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bunch of these files such as this uh, Oracle uh, extra package, uh, Odin and stuff like that. I'll put them in the cloud drive and then I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description just in case anything happens you can find them there. But try to find the original source just so you don't come back if you have a problem and blame me that I gave you a corrupt file which that is not the case whatsoever. Um, 
So now you're going to see I have Odin here. Uh, the problem with the uh, VM machine is the fact that it's kind of hard to fit everything in there without adjusting the resolution. So I just grab the blue bar and I move it to the very top. And as you can see at the very bottom, I can still click start. That's all I really need is just the button start. So I'm going to go in here and I do recommend before you plug in your device is finding all your files and loading them up first. So I added my pit file there. The next one is going to be oh, also make sure you uncheck the repartition. Uh, go down to AP. Now this is going to be a 2.05 gigabyte file. So this is going to take some time. And when I say time, it's going to take either 5 to 10 minutes. That's why I say load all these files first before you plug in your Android in the correct USB, uh, sorry, download mode. Because it just there's so much time that happens that sometimes your download mode will actually disconnect and it won't work. So we're going to go ahead and let that load up. Um, I, th unfortunately, I won't be putting a bootloader in this because I am on an Android Samsung Note 3 for this video and they have locked bootloaders. So if you have a locked bootloader in your device, don't even put anything in the BL section. It'll just take care of that. Um, so once this gets loaded, as you can see, it's re this is real time. This is how long it's going to take. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the rest of the two files connected. Uh, my since I already have it set up to where my USB will automatically connect because I went in the back side of stuff uh, not in the screen that you're seeing where I'm running my actual windows but in the setup the little window right behind it uh, within there in the settings that's where you're gonna go ahead and enable two, USB 2.0 and uh, stuff like that now if for some reason you don't have USB 2.0 set up you need to go back to the two sorry the other version uh, the video, the second video, which I'll have a link in the description, and in there it'll show you how to set all that up. From here, we're just—I have everything set up. I'm just now plugging in my devices and making sure all the appropriate areas are checked off. So as you can see, finally it got done. Uh, what I'm showing you here is I'm just kind of highlighting, showing you that that means that I'm on a Note 900A, which is a Note Samsung 3 from AT&T, and then the next set of version is the firmware that I'm rolling on. So you need to be careful with that as well. Make sure everything kind of matches up to a degree. And that should be it for that. Uh, so when I plug in my device right away, so I'm going to speed this all up right now. So when I plug in my device right away, uh, you'll notice that on the Odin that it will show that it is connected. And when I have all my files in place, I just press start. And it should take care of itself. Now, it will take a long time. Uh, it took me about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe even longer. I stopped counting. I was more of just focused to make sure that my uh, my phone stayed connected. And where that little USB icon is in the very bottom of this little window, you can kind of see it flashing around every time I move the mouse. The same thing will happen when you have your Samsung device plugged in and you press the start button, except it'll be a red dot. And it should just kick on every few seconds, if every second or so. And it'll just kick on and it's just it's just letting you know that hey things are happening if that for some reason there is no red dot and it stops completely anything from happening then you're probably gonna have to restart over from the beginning uh, as far as flashing not as far as installing Odin or any of that type of stuff it just might have uh, disconnected you by accident I had it happen to me a few times so don't think it's just you and that's pretty much it when it comes to getting Odin to work on a virtual machine which is running on Ubuntu which is then running on my Google Chromebook so uh, I posted a picture in a community and a lot of people were joking around how it's kind of like Inception and I couldn't agree more. So again, if you do have any questions or comments about your specific ROM files, flashing files or any of that, you want to head over to XDA Developers. Uh, if you have any questions about this video, you can go ahead and leave them in the section below. Try Googling it first because there's a lot of technicalities and I am on Ubuntu 14.04, so remember that as well. Uh, if you're running into any problems, you're going to have to Google it first because this could be, you know, it could get a little deep as far as trying to figure this out. And that's it. So there you go. As always, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I'll check you guys out next video. Thanks for watching.